Hi, in this playlist we've been looking at the specimen paper set one and it's the higher level tier for Edexcel. Um, the whole idea is that you stop and start the video, have a go at each of the questions and uh, then compare your answers. So in the previous video we worked through to question number six. So in this video we're going to work through to question number um, probably about 15, something like that. But I'm going to aim for about 25-30 minutes. Okay, so let's have a look at question number seven. And in question number seven, we've got the equations of four straight lines. Okay, so we know they are straight lines because they've only got single values of x. They're not x squared or anything like that. So really, it's just a case of comparing each of these. Now, if they are um, parallel, then it means that the gradient is the same. So all we need to do is rewrite each of these three lines here um, so that we show the gradient for each of them. So the first one, well, we know that's going to stay as y equals 2x plus 4. Okay, the second one, we need to make y the subject. Now we've got 2y equals x plus 4. So if I divide through by 2, what I end up with is y equals a half x plus 2. Now that's actually the same as saying, um, if you prefer, y equals x plus 4 divided by 2. It's exactly the same. Okay, now as you can see here, these two are not parallel because they've got different gradients, so it's not those two. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Well, the next one we've got um, this uh, 2x plus 2y equals 4. Well, I'm going to leave that 2y where it is and take that 2x over to the other side, so I end up with... 2y equals 4 minus 2x. Okay, now on this particular one, if I want to then change it around a little bit, I've got uh, minus 2x plus 4, so that's going to become 2y equals minus 2x plus 4. And then again, I need to divide through by 2. Now if I divide through by 2, I'm going to get y equals minus x plus 2, okay? So that's actually line C, that's line B, and that's line A, okay? Now, as you can see here, because this is a minus x gradient, it's not the same as any of the others. Okay, let's have a look at the last one, which is parallel line D, or line D, rather. And now I've got minus y uh, here. So what I'm going to do is to immediately take that y over to the other side because I want a positive value of y. So I'm going to get 2x equals 4 plus y. Okay, and then I need to take that 4 over to the other side, and what I end up with is y equals 2x minus 4. A little bit difficult to read, but if you turn it around the other way, I've got y equals 2x minus 4. Okay, and that's going to be line D. So hopefully you can see that I've got a gradient of 2x here for A and a gradient of 2x here for D. So the two lines that are parallel are going to be A and D. Okay, I hope that's all right for you. Sometimes these questions do just need a little bit of manipulation to be able to, to sort out. Okay, so let's move on then to question number eight. And uh, Question number eight deals with compound interest. Now, uh, increasingly I'm seeing these in lots and lots of different exams, uh, whether it's Edexcel or OCR or AQA, or whatever it might be, uh, you're going to come across this compound interest fairly regularly. Now, the only thing about this is it says work out the amount of money that Ian invested. Well, well, really is just a guess okay um, it is a calculator paper so um, when I first did this question actually I just had the lucky guess that if I put this into the formula then it's going to actually equal 2,500. Remember, it's two years at 3%, so it's 1.03 to the value of 2. And guess what? That is actually correct. So he invested 2,500 at the beginning, and that was just lucky. But you could start at 2,000, work your way through. If you're not familiar with how I've done that, then please do have a look at some of the videos on compound interest. Okay? Next part of the question is Noah has an amount of money to invest for five years. One of them is a saver account, one of them is an investment account. So the saver account, again, is a compound interest calculation. So he's going to invest 4% 
uh, uh, per annum compound interest for five years. I'm going to give him a thousand pounds. Okay. So in this particular case, the saver account. If you have a thousand pounds to invest, and you're going to get four percent. That would be 1.04 to the value of 5. And if I calculate that, that's going to be 1216.6529. Okay, so if I do exactly the same with an investment account, I'm also going to give uh, Noah a £1,000 to do this. So he's got a £1,000. He leaves it with the bank and he gets them paid 21% at the end of five years. So in other words, that's going to be 1.21 as a multiple. So that's going to give him a uh, £1,210 uh, exactly. So therefore, the best rate of interest by a whole margin of £6.65 is actually going to be the saver account. Okay, hopefully that's okay for you. If they don't give you a, um, a sum of money to actually work with, to be honest with you, it's probably easier just to make one up. So usually a £1,000 kind of does it, 10000 if you prefer, but certainly just make up a sum of money in order to do your comparison. Okay, so let's move on then to question number nine. And question number nine, um, on the surface of it, looks a little bit complex but actually it's not too bad really because effectively um, it, it turns into a bit of a Sokotoa type problem, a trigonometry type, type problem because what you can do is you're being asked to calculate the length B D, which is actually this length along here. Well, that's actually, if I just use a ruler, what I can do is I can put this line BD along the top here and I can create a right angle triangle, which I can use bits of information in order to calculate this length along here. Okay, well, one of the things that it tells us is that AB is 1.7 meters, that's fine, and then CD to AB is 1.5 to 1. So we've got this situation where we've got a ratio. So we can say AB to um, CD, well that's 1 to 1.5. Sometimes they're a little bit uh, tricky, they put the, they put the thing the wrong way around just to try to confuse you a little bit, just put it the right way around. Okay, so AB, let's say at the moment, is um, 1.7 metres that we've got. So in other words, if AB is 1.7 metres, we've actually multiplied this by 1.7. So we multiply the other side by 1.7, and that's going to give us a length of CD of 2.55. So this whole length here is going to be 2.55 okay well in order to um, work on our small right angle triangle over here we need to figure out this length over here which is going to be 2.55 take away 1.7 so actually this length over here is 0.85 and we're also told that the angle of elevation of C from A. This is the important thing, from A. So you're on A and you're looking towards C and although the drawing is absolutely dreadful, um, this is 52 degrees. Okay, so it's from A. Imagine that you're standing at point A and you're looking towards point C. It's actually looking up 52 degrees. Okay, so we've now got all the information that we need. In actual fact, what we've got is just simply a right angle triangle where we've got 52 degrees over here. The opposite to our 52 degrees is 0 0.85, and that's actually the opposite. Okay, the um, adjacent, which is this point along here, is actually going to be DB. Okay, it's this line along here, which is the line that we're trying to calculate. So we're just going to use one of our ratios to be able to calculate that. So we've got so. Ka and then Toa. Okay, now in this particular case, I'm going to use the tangent ratio because I know the tangent of 52 degrees, I know the opposite, which is 0 0.85, and I'm trying to figure out the adjacent. So what I end up with is tan of 52 degrees 
equals the opposite, which is 0 0.85 divided by the adjacent. Okay, now I need to be able to manipulate this in order to make the adjacent the subject. Now you might do that slightly different to me, to me, but what I would do is I'd multiply through by the adjacent both sides, cancel this side out, and then divide through by the tangent of 52. So what I actually get is the adjacent equals the opposite, which is 0 0.85 divided by the tangent of 52 degrees. And if you pop that into your calculator, you're going to get 0 0.66409. Okay, now just be careful with these sorts of things, and sometimes it does catch you out a little bit um, that it says correct to three significant figures. So to correct to three significant figures, that means that uh, the length DB or BD will be equal to 0.664, and that would be the answer. Okay, I hope that's all right for you. Let's move on then to uh, question number 10. And uh, question number 10, uh, hopefully it'll fit on the uh, on the video screen, okay? Uh, but basically what we're doing, question number 10, is um, showing uh, inequalities. Now, some of these are uh, they're fairly straightforward, but you just need to take your time and actually working these through. Now, if you've not worked with inequalities on a graph, please do again have a look at the playlist and see if you can figure out these. Because all we're going to do really is plot each of these lines, where in this particular case, I'm going to say y equals x minus 1 and y equals 3x and y equals 4 minus x. Okay, so let's just do uh, the first one which I pointed out, which is this one here. So what I'm actually going to say is that y equals x minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to take some uh, values of x, and you can see very helpfully at the bottom here, they've given us these values of x. Now, I suggest that because it's a straight line, you really don't need to use all of them. You can do if you want, but it's just going to take a little bit more time. And really all you need is maybe three or four different points to be able to then plot a straight line. Okay, so in this particular case, I'm going to use the values of x, where x equals minus 2, um, 0, and then I'm also going to have 2 and 4. Okay, so I'm going to use four points. I don't necessarily, as I mentioned before, have to be 1, 2, 3, and 4, but I'm going to see how these work out for me. Okay, so if I got the value of y, I've got when x equals minus 2, y must equal minus 2 minus 1, which is going to be minus 3. Okay? When y, uh, well, big problem, when x equals 0, y must equal minus 1. When x equals 2, y must equal 1. And when x equals 4, y must equal 3. And what it allows me to do then is to basically plot those three, uh, four points on my graph and then I can draw that as a straight line. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot um, minus 2, minus 3, which although you probably can't see it too well on the screen, it's actually down there. Okay, and then I've got 0, minus 1. So 0, minus 1 is going to be here. Uh, so along to 0 and down to minus 1. I beg your pardon, long to zero and down to minus one. Okay, and then I'm going to do, um, what's the next one? I've got two, one, so two, one is there, and then I've got four and three. And what you'll see is that if you plot these through uh, well, then you should be able to join them up as a straight line. So what I've got there is a line now I'm going to draw it as a dash line. Now this is something that um, I do actually do on my own videos, that where it doesn't equal, it just is, in this particular case, y is larger than x minus 1. Because it doesn't equal, the common convention is to just use a dash line. However, don't worry about it because we're actually only showing the region that satisfies them, but it is something you might need to be aware of. So what we're saying is, is that this is the line where y equals x minus 1, and the values that satisfy the inequality are above that line. y is greater than those particular
particular values. Okay, so let's have a look at the other lines now. So I'm going to do um, y equals 3x, so y equals 3x, which is this final one at the end here. And again, I'm going to use values of x and values of y, so values of x, values of y. Okay, and in this particular case, I'm going to use, um, I think I'm going to use um, minus 1 for x. And I'm also going to use 0, and I'm going to use 2, OK? Now, that's just a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of experience. The problem with these is that if you use the wrong values of x, what you're going to find is you won't be able to plot them on the graph because the y values are going to be too much. So, for instance, if you said that the value of x is going to be minus 2, well, 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. And actually, if you look at the y-axis here, I don't have a minus 6 to use. OK, so um, in this particular case, I need to just be a little bit careful with it. So I'm going to plot the value of uh, y when x equals minus 1. So that would be minus 3. And when x equals 0, that's going to be 3 times 0 is 0. And when x equals 2, y is going to be 6. So in this particular case, I can again, I can plot my points. So I've got minus 1 minus 3 is going to be down here. OK, and then I've got 0, 0, and then I've got 2 and 6 all the way up here. And again, I can plot or I can draw my straight line through all of those points that I've plotted, OK, and I'm going to end up with a line like that, OK? Now, in this particular case, what we're saying is that uh, this is the line y equals 3x, and the values of y are smaller. So the values of y are smaller than this, so therefore it's going to be underneath that line. OK, I appreciate this is quite a difficult one to show on the graph, but hopefully we'll be all right. So we've got the final one, which is going to be the values of y equal to 4 minus x. So it's actually this one at the very top. And all I've done is I've taken that value of x and plugged it over here. OK, so in this particular case, again, I'm going to use some values of x. And those values are going to be when x equals um, 0, 2, and 4, I think. OK, so in this particular case, if um, x equals 4, then y must equal 4 itself. OK, oh, sorry, beg your pardon. x equals 0, 4 minus 0, so y equals 4. When x equals 2... 4 minus 2 is going to be 2, and when x equals 4, 4 minus 4 is going to be 0. OK, so let's just plot those lines through and make sure we're OK with those. So the first one is going to be 0, 4, so that's going to be over here. OK, and then I've got 2, 2, that's going to be here, and then I've got 4, 0, that's going to be here. So again, I can draw a straight line where y equals 4 minus x. OK, join up all of those points. And hopefully by now you can clearly see that there is a region which is right in the middle of these inequalities. OK, and it's actually this region here. OK, and hopefully that's come across on the screen okay but that's the region r that they're asking us to do okay quite tough that particular one um so i think it's gone on for a little bit of time we're actually on about 18 minutes i think what we'll